us through um, the Zoom service today. Um, we're going to be hearing from Seb later on. We're um, going through Philippians at the moment, so that should be a real blessing. Um, I just wanted to mention, firstly, um, we're really looking forward to obviously getting back to seeing people. We're planning on having two socially distanced services before, God willing, before the um, lockdown hopefully is, is fully eased. Those two dates are May the 16th and June the 13th, and they will be at Christchurch. Now, if you have children and um, you've got younger children and are hoping to bring them along, then it would be great if you can let us know. We're not planning on having a usual Sunday school for them, but we will be putting on activities for them. Um, and we just want to know how many people um, will be there with their little ones so that we can plan appropriately. So, yeah, that'll be great if you can just pop Rose an email. Um, then that'll be great just to let us know leading up to May the 16th and June the 13th. So I think I'm going to pray now and then I will hand over to Cathy for the kids talk. So let's just come together before the Lord and, and pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for the ability to meet together um, virtually, Lord. Um, thank you for your blessings, for the sunshine, for your provision for us. Thank you for this church family. Um, and Lord, I just pray that you would be with us today, that you would be here by your Holy Spirit in each of our homes, um, just speaking to us. Um, and Lord, I just pray that um, the technology works and that you would just lead us smoothly through that we have learned more of you. Amen. Hand over to Kathy. Thank you. Um, let me just see a few more people. It's gone a little bit small. Hold on. Right, got you. Hello. Um, I haven't said hello to Sammy or to Noah. I don't know if there's a Jack and a Genevieve. So hello if you're there as well. And nice to see the world is and one Sumner. Nice to see you, Isabella, as well. So hello to you. Now, I wonder how many of you managed to encourage somebody this week. If you remember, hi, Joshy and Ollie. If you remember last week, we were talking about Paul's letter of encouragement. And I said my prayer for you was that you would find somebody to encourage. I wonder if any of you managed to make a card or draw a picture or maybe even write a letter and send it to someone this week. If not, don't worry, you can encourage somebody anytime. It didn't just have to be last week. So you can still do that. Have a little think and a pray about somebody who you think might need a little cheering up or a little cheerful word. Well, today we're going to be reading the next part of um, Paul's letter. And there's a little bit in there that reminded me of a game that we used to play whenever we used to go around to the Perkins house for tea. And we used to get around there and Brayden, Rose's son, who's now way taller than me and quite old, <laughs> used to say, would you rather, and we all used to groan because we knew exactly what was coming. I wonder if any of you have ever played, would you rather? Yeah, Jasmine, have you ever played that? Yeah, well, let's start off with an easy one. This isn't just for children. You can all join in for this one. So nice, easy one to get you going. Would you rather have a cat or a dog? That's dead easy. Would you rather have a lifetime supply of crisps or chocolate? That's probably fairly easy. <laughs> Would you rather be invisible for the day or be able to fly for a day? Would you rather be able to speak every single language in the world or be able to talk to animals? Would you rather be itchy all the time or sticky all the time? Remember, you've got to choose one. You can't say neither. <laughs> you're either itchy or you're sticky. 
Which would be best? Which would you rather? This one's a favourite of ours. Would you rather find a hundred spiders in your bedroom or a tiger? <laughs> oh, this one's very easy for me. Would you rather have to give up brushing your hair or brushing your teeth? For me, that's not an option, giving up brushing my teeth. So my hair would just have to be a great big burst. Mind you, with lockdown, I think a lot of us have got used to that anyway, haven't we? And this is the last one. This is my absolute favourite. This might take a little bit of thinking about. Would you rather have legs as long as your fingers or fingers as long as your legs? So would you rather have legs as long as your fingers, little tiny legs, or fingers as long as your legs. <laughs> so, slightly strange game. Now, the reason that I thought of that is because in his letter, I've got my Bible here, I'm just reading from it. In his letter, Paul said that he just couldn't make up his mind whether he would rather go and live with Jesus in heaven or stay and help the people around him on earth. He actually said, it is hard to choose between the two. I want to leave this life and be with Christ. That is much better, but you need me here. I know you need me, and so I know that I will stay with you. I will help you grow and have joy in your faith. Now, maybe while you're listening to the rest of this service, you could write or maybe draw some would you rather questions. How wacky and weird could you make them? And maybe when you've done that, you could play it with the rest of your family at tea time tonight. While you're playing, remember Paul and maybe ask your grown up if they've ever had to make any really hard choices for God. Have fun with that. Thanks, Jem. Thank you, Gabby. Um, so in a moment, we're going to um, have a time of musical worship um, that Chloe is going to lead us in. Um, I just feel really blessed that Tim and Chloe have been able to lead us through um, this um, whole year virtually with music. Um, it's not easy um, and I'm very thankful for them. Um, but I just encourage you, I know it's not the same as us all singing all together um, and it's not the same as um, listening to, I don't know, whatever your preference of musical worship is, whether that's Graham Kendrick or Hillsong or Maverick City Music or whatever. Um, I just really encourage you to focus on where you are with, with God at the moment and just come back to being honest with him, being open to him and remembering that in all circumstances, we're called to praise him and thank him. Um, and I just wanted to read Psalm um, 96 just before Chloe leads us. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvellous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendour and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of nations, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendour of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established, it cannot be moved. He will judge the people with equity. Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad, let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Then all the trees of the forest will sing for joy. They will sing before the Lord for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the people in his truth. Thanks, Chloe. Thanks, Jen. And we want a special shout out if she's ever watching again to Claire King-Smith for being with us for a little bit of time. We miss you. 
<laughs> Thanks, Claire. But um, yeah, let's worship God together. We're going to start with just Maverick City music, actually, as Jen mentioned. We're going to sing um, You Keep On Getting Better, uh, just in, in praise to God. It's all about his goodness to us in every season, in every circumstance. So let's open with that together. I will sing of your goodness. I will sing of your love. Though the seasons come quickly, you have always been enough. And though the night may get darker, though the waiting seems long, you have always been faithful to remind us of your love. And you are good. And in the morning I sing it. good to me you have always been patient you have always been kind you're consistent through the ages oh what a friend of mine I remind my soul to bless you standing firm upon your truth knowing you cannot be shaken cause I've seen what you can do and you Restores my life, 
to you for I know you satisfy hello can everyone hear me this is my third device I've been on since we started so hopefully you can all hear me my name's Amy and I've got the pleasure of praying this afternoon so shall we pray Lord Jesus I just want to start by thanking you that we can meet together today it still maybe is not in the way that we would like it but Lord I thank you that we live in a place where we can openly worship you Lord, I thank you that despite um, that it's not what we want and sometimes there are difficulties around technology and things, I just thank you so much that we do have that technology and we do have that equipment and that ability to continue to meet, Lord, to continue to be a church family, even though we're in different buildings, in different places, Lord Jesus, um, we are still united in you as one church family. Uh, Lord, I just pray for the weeks ahead as we plan face-to-face meetups for, for us as um, South Street, Lord. I pray that you're with those that are organising to facilitate this, Lord. I pray um, that they're able to do this in the right way, Lord Jesus. Lord, may you always be at the centre, Lord Jesus. Lord, I thank you that despite our individual differences, we're all made to worship you. Um, Lord, I thank you that you are good. I thank you that we live in a place where it's often easy to see your beauty around. I thank you that with the sun shining over the last couple of weeks and with things feeling a little bit more positive around us, in lots of ways it feels easier to be thankful, Lord, and to see you. Um, but Lord, I, I really thank you that you are just not, you're not just there when things feel brighter and easier, but Lord, that we know you're there always. Um, Lord, we know that when things are feeling tough, um, when, when there are struggles in our life, Lord, that it's you that we can lean on. Lord, I just pray for each of us. I just pray as we think of those things in our life that maybe are weighing heavy on our hearts, um, those struggles that we find daily, Lord, or those things that sometimes feel just a bit overwhelming, Lord Jesus, I, I thank you and I pray and I ask that you can lift that burden. I thank you, Lord, that we know when um, times in our life are difficult, um, that you will carry us, Lord. And I thank you that we can all look back and, and can see when that's been, Lord, when you've lifted us. And I pray just, Lord, for those people that need it today, that they really feel lifted and carried by you. Lord, may they feel loved and valued. May they know you, may we all know you as our Father and our strength, Lord. Lord, I am so grateful that our restrictions are easing um, because things are improving around us. But I do think of those countries that this isn't the case. 
Lord, I think and pray particularly for India where cases are soaring and deaths are rising, Lord Jesus, and that real desperation and the lack of infrastructure there to cope. Lord, Lord Jesus, I just pray for a miracle. I know we all do. I pray for those in power to have the wisdom to deal with this crisis. I pray for their physical need, the sort of av availability of oxygen and hospital beds and just the physical um, care that's needed, Lord Jesus. Lord, we lift this country to you and others like it who are really struggling, Lord. And Lord, I just pray for us as things are changing for us. Many of us have um, maybe returned to work after furlough or that's something that's coming up maybe opened our businesses again, um, Lord, and, and sort of a, either recently restarted or um, are looking forward to a new beginning. Lord, I pray for the smooth running of that. I pray for things to um, sort of come together. Um, I pray for peace that for those that are worrying about how they're going to step forward, Lord. Um, I just pray and, and thank you for this last week of the school term. I thank you that um, most of the kids are back at school now, Lord Jesus, and just how positive that has been for them. I pray for our local schools, Lord. I just thank you how they've coped over this time. Lord, I just want to think of Braunton Academy, Lord. I know that they are going to be going through a big change with a change in headmaster, Lord, I just thank you for the current head. Just pray for them as they go on to new things. Um, Lord Jesus, I just really pray for whoever is going to take up this post. I pray that we can have great links with them. I pray for new opportunities in terms of um, us as a church um, having links. I pray for that person to be open to the gospel, open to a Christian union. Um, Lord, it'd be amazing to see um, a massive positive change there. I just lift them up to you as um, they interview a point um, for that right person, Lord Jesus. Lord, I just thank you that this, this afternoon you do want to speak to each of us. Lord, I thank you that you want to fill our hearts um, Lord, I just pray, open our ears, Lord, help us to hear what you want to tell us. Um, I really pray um, for us to um, learn more about you today and be filled more of you to, um, today, Lord. Help us to be hungry for more of you, Lord Jesus. Lord, and I just pray for our eyes to be open to those that are around us. Um, to those that are really struggling, help us to know what people need, Lord. Help us to be brave. Help us to step out of our comfort zone, Lord, and show others um, your love. I pray, Lord Jesus, fill our hearts so that it overflows and is obvious to those around us that we are your children um, and that you want to um, you want to love, Lord. Lord, just thank you for this afternoon. Thank you for this time together. Amen. Thank you, Amy. Um, can you hear me? Yes, you can. Yeah. Um, so we're going to have the Bible reading now. So I'm just going to read from Philippians and then I'm going to pray for Seb before he speaks to us. So this is Philippians chapter one, starting at verse 12. Now, I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I'm in chains for Christ. Because of my chains, most of the brothers in the Lord have been encouraged to speak the word of God more courageously and fearlessly. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so in love, knowing that I am put here for the defence of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not, sincere, not sincerely, supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I'm in chains. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. 
And because of this, I rejoice. Yes, and I will continue to rejoice. For I know that through your prayers and the help given by the spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labour for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain. And I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith so that through my being with you again, your joy in Christ Jesus will overflow on account of me. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then, whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in one spirit, contending as one man for the faith of the gospel, without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. This is a sign to them that they will be destroyed and that you will be saved and that by God. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for him. Since you were going through the same struggle you saw I had and now hear that I still have. Let's just pray for Seb before he speaks to us. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. Thank you that you haven't left us without any direction, um, without any hope, but you've given us your word to speak to us, Lord, through your Holy Spirit. And Lord, I do pray that you would be with Seb. I feel that, just pray that you would um, fill him, Lord, with your Holy Spirit, that you would give him your words to speak. And Lord, I pray that we would listen, that we would be open to what you have to say to us. I do pray that you would challenge us, Lord, even though that might be hard, and that you would help us to become more and more like you. Just pray this in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Jen. Um, Can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me okay? Okay, I'm, mine's very jittery here, so please don't be embarrassed to wave frantically at me if this is really rubbish audio and we'll try and sort something out, okay? Um, I can kind of see a whole bunch of you there, so yeah, if even if halfway through it's not working, just wave frantically at me. Um, that'd be great. Um, awesome. Uh, yeah, so here we are. We're in week three of our new series in the book of Philippians. I hope you've been enjoying going through uh, the studies in your home groups. Uh, if you're not in a home group, uh, join up with one. It'd be really, really great um, for you to join a home group. Um, just get in touch with us and let us know. Um, we'd love to hook you up with a home group. Um, so, yeah. Um, well, um, some of you will know this, but back at the end of uh, 2020, um, our house was disconnected from the mains gas supply uh, for about three months. So we had no heating in the depths of winter uh, for about three months. I can see Mim's uh, recollection of uh, how awful it was on her face. Um, we had uh, the wood burner going in the kitchen uh, every single day and we burnt through every last scrap of burnable wood uh, that we had. <laughs> um, but even then with the wood burner, uh, the house got very, very cold. Um, we wore lots of layers and we used an electric blanket at night. Um, and uh, yeah, it caused me to reflect on a whole bunch of stuff. Um, Our house was built 114 years ago and it probably had gas heating installed 
I don't know, maybe 40 or 50 years ago. And so for well over half of its life, our house had no gas central heating. It had no bathroom. It had just one outside toilet and it had no vehicular access. And it got me thinking about how, how did people survive? They just had open fires and I guess they just wore lots of clothes and they probably didn't wash very often, I'm guessing. Uh, and it just got me thinking about how everything in modern life is aimed at making life comfortable. Washing machines, dishwashers, uh, central heating, the fact that I can even see some of you there in your houses wearing shorts and t-shirts uh, is all about our comfort, isn't it? We can whack the heating up and pretend we're on holiday in Hawaii in the comfort of our own homes. Um, now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with comfort. And I'm not advocating that we uh, go to like an Amish sort of lifestyle or anything. But could it be that our attitude towards comfort needs addressing? Could it be that we have settled into a mindset of entitlement rather than a mindset of gratitude? When life is uncomfortable, when we are in pain, when we face difficult circumstances, does it cause us to be grateful for all that we normally enjoy? Or does it make us feel like we have been wronged in some way? Does it cause us to cry out, why me? Or why, why God? Why, what, what are you doing taking away my comfort like this? Maybe it causes us to ask, are you really God? Or are you really good? Or are you really sovereign? It might cause us to ask whether we really trust God. Maybe it reveals that we only pay lip service to trusting God when life is sweet. Well, there is nothing that will test our beliefs more than suffering for them. And today we are going to explore very quickly the Apostle Paul's subversive words, particularly in verse 21, when he says, to live is Christ, to die is gain. And I want to ask you just one question, one awkward question. Are you ready to die? Are you ready to die? Because I want to suggest that no one is ready to live until they are ready to die. <laughs> No one is ready to really live until they are ready to die. In his lifetime, Paul was pelted with rocks and stones. He was beaten with rods three times. He was shipwrecked three times. He was starved. He was exiled and he was thrown into prison a few times. Remember, even a couple of weeks ago, uh, we were in the account in Acts uh, where Paul was in the Philippian jail and God busted him free. And the Philippian jailer was spared and came to faith and his whole household was baptised. Well, here in this passage in Philippians, the Apostle Paul is in prison again for his faith. Paul just would not stop spreading the good news to people. He would not sp stop spreading the gospel. Nothing would stop this man. He was 100% focused on telling people the gospel, the good news that this fallen human race may find 
salvation from the wrath of God through the sinless life and substitutionary death of Jesus Christ. He would not stop telling people that Jesus obtained perfect righteousness by living the perfect life that you and me could never live and that he purchased our pardon from sin by his death on the cross through the shedding of his own blood and that he gave his life and that by this sin-bearing substitutionary act Jesus redeemed all who he came to save that forgiveness of sin is offered to all as a free gift that is received by faith alone apart from any good works now the Jews and the authorities really didn't like this message and so they kept throwing him into prison for it and beating him up but still Paul would not stop you see Paul had his priorities set his direction was sure he had no doubt over his purpose and it is not the relentless pursuit for a comfortable life i wonder how quick we are i know i often am to talk of spiritual attack when our comfort is threatened if our attempt to share the gospel is thwarted then we're probably even worse and I've been so struck with these last two passages that we've read remember in Acts chapter 16 Paul and his companions it was it says in that chapter were kept by the Holy Spirit from what from being comfortable no it says that they were kept from preaching the word in the province of Asia the spirit of Jesus wouldn't allow them to enter Mysia or Bithynia amazing that they recorded it in that way we surely would have put that down to the work of the enemy to a spiritual attack but not so with Paul and his companions and in today's passage, Paul is writing from prison, probably in Rome. He's under house arrest. He would have been shackled to a Roman Praetorian guard, one of Caesar's elite guards. And they would have taken it in shifts to monitor Paul's every move. They would literally have been shackled to him, probably 18 inches to two foot from him. 24 7 i mean that is lockdown isn't it in the truest sense talk about claustrophobic having some roman centurion shackled to you paul was appointed as paul's uh, as god's apostle his god's mouthpiece to the gentiles to the non-jewish world and yet here he is locked down for two years shackled to Roman guards I would have been so frustrated if I had been told that my job was to do one thing and then I'd been locked down but does it stop Paul from his mission does he ask believers his brothers and sisters to pray against the work of the devil no he writes that what has happened has served to advance the gospel. It's God, he says. <laughs> he is in charge. How, just think about it for a moment, how can being chained to one man at a time 24-7 for two years be something that Paul can rejoice about and say that it has advanced the gospel? <laughs> <laughs> and talk about a captive audience these roman praetorian guards were stuck with paul one to one probably in two hour shifts at a time day and night and so paul 
preached and discipled them. And we can see, even just from this letter, that the gospel spread from them to Caesar's family. At the end of this letter to the Philippians, uh, in chapter 4, verse 22, it says that all God's people here, he's talking about um, Rome, send you greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. The word spread through Paul, through these Praetorian guards, into Caesar's household. They were the ones that had access into his household. How cool is that? Paul is so confident of God's sovereignty in all things that he can see him at work in all things. He is so confident of who God is and of what he has done in purchasing Paul for himself at the cross that Paul knows what he is there to do and he knows where he is going in the end. He is able to utter perhaps one of the most rock and roll statements in the whole of the New Testament. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. For me to live is Christ, to die is gain. And what does he mean by living for Christ? He means very simply suffering <laughs> for the sake of the gospel. Well, I wonder how many of you, put your hand up if you watch Line of Duty. Anyone watch Line of Duty? A few of you, yes. Some of you do, you were just too embarrassed to put your hand up, I reckon. Um, well, uh, perhaps if you've watched Line of Duty, or maybe if you've watched some of those, um, those really gnarly real life police documentaries that are following gangs in Manchester, um, it's common for organized crime groups to punish people in order to instill fear in them and ensure that nobody would ever go to the police to give evidence that might incriminate them. They instill fear in people by um, uh, persecuting them basically don't they? But look what happens here, Paul is being persecuted, he's in chains, but are they all fearful? No, that doesn't happen here. Look at verse 14. It says that the believers in Rome have become more confident to proclaim the gospel because of Paul's treatment. How on earth is that possible? Why is that? Why is it that Paul being in chains meant that they too could effectively be saying to live is Christ and to die is gain? Paul's boldness in the face of suffering has somehow filled the other believers with confidence. His willingness in the face of suffering to spread the gospel is contagious. Rather than other people's faith being knocked because of Paul's treatment, because of his imprisonment, it had the opposite effect. Paul's chains weren't interpreted by uh, the Christians in Rome as God being impotent and Rome or the forces of evil winning. No, the gospel was still spreading despite Paul's chains. And so they were testament to the fact that God's purposes cannot be thwarted. The gates of hell will not prevail. God is sovereign, even when it appears that he is not. His ways are higher than our ways and so I want to suggest to you again that no one is ready to really live out their best life their God intended life their fullest most beautiful life until they are ready to die when we know that death will usher us into the presence of God, then we will live with fearless faith. When we have a sure and certain hope in Christ's forgiveness and the redemption that gives us confidence to live each day to the fullest. And this isn't just 
willpower. This isn't just stiff upper British lip. This is the power of God living in you. And so I want to ask you again, are you ready to die? Are you ready to stand before the Lord? There is only one way to be prepared for the reality of that future time. You must put your entire trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the only solid ground on which to stand. stand. All else is sinking sand. It's only then that we will be able to say with Paul that to live is Christ and to die is gain. So maybe you are stuck in a difficult job. Maybe you're without a job. Maybe you're facing illness. Perhaps you've just had a shock diagnosis. Maybe someone in your family has. Maybe you or someone you know is waiting for uh, a life changing operation and it's been delayed by COVID. Whatever situation you find yourself in, it is a unique opportunity to proclaim Christ and to tell of his love and his grace where it otherwise might not be heard. You are not where you are by accident. You are where you are by divine appointment for the sake of Christ. So will our circumstances cause us to shrink from preaching the gospel? Or will they give us the opportunity to press into him and magnify his name? What difficult circumstances are you facing? And how can Christ be exalted in that situation? What about us as a church? Are we willing to die in order that we might bring life to others? Are we willing to suffer ridicule and maybe even persecution that we might live completely for Christ? What does that look like? Are we often seeking the comfort and the ease of our members rather than having our priorities set on sharing the good news of Christ, the life giver, the joy bringer, no matter what the consequences are. Are we ready to die? Are you ready to die? Uh, let me pray for us. Father God, thank you for the amazing account of Paul's life recorded for us. Thank you that he could utter those words, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Father, would you fill us with your Holy Spirit afresh? Father, would you remind us of the sure and certain hope that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ, in his death and resurrection, in his substitutionary death in our place, and his resurrection that proclaims the power of death, uh, the power of God over death. Father, thank you that we live uh, in the sure and certain hope of knowing where we're going, not on our own account but on Jesus's account. Father, would you fill us with boldness and confidence to share the gospel with a broken and hurt uh, world around us? In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Um, we're gonna sing one last song. Um, hopefully it'll work because Seb and I are now sharing bandwidth so hopefully you can see and hear me
Um, we're actually going to sing a song about that sacrifice and about that person, our solid ground that Seb was speaking about. So um, let's sing that now. Thank you, Chloe and Seb. Shall we just continue in prayer? Lord Jesus, we do just thank you that your death has brought us gain, Lord. Thank you that by what you did on the cross, we can have a relationship with you. Lord, thank you for what you've been teaching us today through Seb and through this service, Lord. And I do just pray that we would um, be people that um, mould this over, Lord, for the rest of the day, for the rest of the week, Lord. I pray that we would, um, we would seriously consider where we are with you so that we can live our life to the fullest with that assurance of where we're heading. And Lord, I pray that we would be people who can be joyful through suffering, that we wouldn't look at that as an abnormality, that, that um, it shouldn't happen to us. Why is it happening to me? But that we should see it as 
an opportunity, like Seb was saying, to spread the gospel and to further your kingdom because we know we know where we're heading and that's an assurance that only you can give us lord amen so that comes to the end of our service i do just um would encourage you to um just look at that passage again this week hopefully you're part of a home group where you'll be chatting about it and studying it a bit more um philippians is a brilliant book um, I love it. Um, and I really, um, yeah, hope that you have the opportunity to look into it a bit more. Um, we are now going to have our challenge um, as usual. And then David will invite us to um, go out into breakout rooms so that we can um, just have a chat and a catch up. So um, thank you all for joining us and um, hopefully see you soon. Thanks, David. everyone for those of you who don't know me my name is Rose and I have been set a challenge for this week last week Chloe set a challenge um, and asked for us to find a Bible verse with the word lion in it as in lion and I found one in Proverbs 28 verse 1 which says the wicked run away when no one is chasing them, but the godly are as bold as lions. So thanks for that, Chloe. So yes, my challenge this week was or is to make somebody smile. Um, and I have to do that by using a hobby or an interest of mine. Now I've got quite a few hobbies and interests. And the one that I'm gonna use today, I love gardening. I love flowers. I don't know what I'm doing with them, but I do love them. And I am going to try and make a flower arrangement. So I've got a bowl and I've stickied it up a little bit. And, um, and I've got some flowers. And for any of you that do this properly as a hobby, I suggest you close your eyes now um, because this is my first one. And I possibly will be doing it all wrong, but it's the end result. And as long as I, I um, put a smile on somebody's face. pretty little posy. I'm going to um, run, run this over to kicks so I'll see you in a minute. is to find a verse in the Bible that talks about flowers. Mute. 
Oh. It's just you and me, so 